So up on the bench today is a Dell 23 inch monitor. You may think there's nothing wrong with it, but if you look really closely, you know that it has a pink hue to it. And this is a common problem on these monitors, where as they age, the black light, which is this thing right here, sits on the side of the screen inside the screen assembly and it shines the backlight across the screen. As these LEDs get old, the phosphor coating on them starts to wear out and the ultraviolet LED under the phosphor will start to show more and more. This one right here doesn't really have too much of a pink hue to it compared to other ones I've worked on, but if you kind of see the monitor behind it, you can tell that it's really pink. And a lot of people say, well, you can go into your menu and let's see the brightness no that's not it go back menu and they'll say oh just go to your color settings down here and you can mess with your colors and you can do all these different ones and you notice the pink just kind of stays with all of them and if you do custom color you can kind of make the pink go away but then everything starts turning blue and green well that's not really a fix and I'm gonna fix this today by replacing the backlight you can get these for anywhere from eight to ten dollars on eBay or Aliexpress but getting to the backlight is a real problem as I'll show you so let me get this off of here turn this off and what you have to do is unmount it from the back and there's a little button right there. Let me unplug this. Take that off of there. Try to do this one-handed. Maybe it won't result in a disaster. Okay, I got that off. Move the stand out of the way. So what you have to do to get the screen out is you go around the base and there's little clips and you can do it for the whole way around. Just be careful not to pull the side with the buttons up too much. There's a cable that runs to it. Get around the top. Okay, I'll have to set the camera to the side here for a second. Anywhere where I can put this. And carefully flip it over. Okay. So on the back, some monitors have it and some don't. These holes right here, or if you want to use vase mounts to mount it to the wall, I already took the screws out of here and then the back just lifts off like this. So, and here's where you have your signal board and the power supply, and this is gonna have to come off. So what you'll have to do is undo this tape to get to the data cable. This is for the buttons on the front over there. So, carefully undo it you'll have to reuse this unless you have what's called Naswa tape which is commonly used for air conditioning ducts and attics you can get it from Home Depot for pretty cheap and I'm gonna use some of that when I put this back together because there's no screws holding this to the actual monitor it's literally just taped on there older monitors had screws holding it down and were a little more robustly built but not modern ones They're built to be as cheap as possible so this is the USB ports on the side of the monitor. We we'll have to take the tape off. And this just has a clip on the top that you push down and you can pull it out. And the data cable for the front of the TV, a little hard to see. You can gently pull it out, like so. Just gently wiggle it out. But there are tabs on the side that you can pull out to make it a lot easier going in and out and I'd actually recommend it just get a small screwdriver and pop them out and this is the 
data cable that goes to the TCON board. And there's actually a different issue. If your monitor has pink and it has lines in it, then there's something wrong with the TCON board. And there's a common fix for that one too, but it's a lot more difficult. And for this one, it goes into that side. So this is the backlight connector. And there's two little tabs right here. And then just push them in and gently rock it back and forth till it comes out. And it's stuck to some tape right there. Okay, there's some more tape for this right here. Let's move that out of the way. There's another piece of tape right here. Let's get that off. It's going to be a pain. Okay, at this point, this little housing is free. But what you want to make sure to do is these little holes that are around here you want to use a sharpie or something to mark where the holes are so you know where to put it back because this thing can slide literally anywhere on the monitor a little bit of tape back here all right we're not going to be doing anything in here today but this is the input board for the DVI and the VGA. And this is your power board right here. So if you had to replace capacitors, all you have to do is there's a clip here and a clip there and two screws, one there, one over here. And then you'll have to take the, uh, there's two screws for the IEC connector. There's one screw right there. And when you get that, that'll come out move that down there okay so the panel is held together with clips and with screws so there's a screw here a screw there there's a screw here there's one over here and then there's one right over there and you'll have to take those off and you also have to peel back this which is protecting the TCON board. It's not too difficult to get off once you get it started. Just be sure you don't rip it. And usually it's pretty good about re-sticking itself. So let's... This is a two-handed job. I'll be back when I have this all off. Okay, managed to get the tape off of the TCON board. Now I mentioned that there's another problem that can happen if you start having lines in your screen or if it starts having a lot of glitching in and out. Well, you'll want to check the solder connections on all these surface mounted, in particular these big capacitors right here. I repaired two other monitors that had both of these caps right here short out and they're 10 microfarad caps I think at 50 volts they're surface mounted and they can be annoying to pull on and off if you don't have hot tweezers so I just recommend getting some desolder braid and sucking off as much solder as you can and then using some tweezers while you're heating it up to get it off just try not to lift any pads these two right here can also be troublesome and especially this chip right here it, the leads on the side frequently crack if you do some drag soldering on the side with plenty of flux it should fix that one up but I've not seen any problems with any of these other chips but you might, you might want to just check them out with a, a multimeter to make sure that they're not shorted out or reading incorrectly but anyway to get this T-Con board off. It's also glued on. Just have to get a side up a little bit and try not to flex the board too much. But if you get it up, you can slowly work your way over. It'll eventually come off. There it goes. There we go. Okay. Now the next part's going to be really difficult. And I probably won't be able to shoot it, but there's 
clips all along the side. Let me get a flashlight here. So let's see. Like there's a clip right there. And what you'll have to do is get a, have the small screwdriver set right here. Let's see. Oh, this one looks like it'll work. This back. just have to insert it in there very carefully and then pry the screen up and you'll have to do this while the panels upside down so it doesn't fall back in place but you go all the way around here and be especially careful there's some clips in between here where the T-Con board goes into the panel and do not rip any of these cables if you do your monitor is trashed I'll be back when I get those out. Okay, so once you get that big old metal chunk off of there, you'll see that this LCD panel assembly is bare, and you might find that it wants to come out because it's just sitting in this little plastic bezel right here. So you can carefully get it out if you grab an edge and you lift it up. And then you'll have to swing the T-Con board out of the back, out from under the monitor, and this whole piece will come off. But you want to be careful not to get any dust on these layers down here, because you'll see it when the screen turns back on. So what I use is just one of those air dusters after I'm done, to make sure that as much dust as possible is removed from that surface. And the, let me see, that's the right side of the screen, so the... LED module will be on this side yeah I can feel it under there so it'll be on this side once I get this plastic mount off and there's just more of those clips down there that you'll have to get off once the screen comes off and again this is a two-handed operation so I'll be back once I get down to the bare metal alright I've gotten that retainer off of there and here's the little LED module right here on the side of the screen. To get at it, you'll have to carefully move the back diffuser with a flat bladed screwdriver. Let me see if I can do this. Alright, and you have about that much space to move it over. Okay, got that out of the way. Sometimes the back doesn't want to go with it, so yeah, it's really being stubborn. But we might be able to do it without it. So to get this out of there, it has a uh, strip of adhesive behind it. Just use something to pry along the side. have to do that for the whole length of it. And depending on if you want to save this module, because you can rebuild these if you have the correct equipment like I have right here. So I have a, you'll have to use a hot air tool to get them off of there and then re-solder them with that. And you can get the LEDs. I think these are 7020 LEDs and they're 3 volt not 6 volt modules because the 6 volt one puts both of the LEDs that are in the module in series and the 3 volt ones have them in a, there's a kind of a connection in the middle so it can have both of them act powered independently Okay, I'm having a little bit of trouble, so I'm going to have to turn the camera off again. This is a two-handed operation. I'll be right back when I get the old one off and the new one back on. Alright, so I got the old module out, which is right here. And I got the new one and the retainer back in. I forgot to record that part. But on the back of this, 
like I was saying earlier, there's an adhesive strip. And I should have mentioned this at the start of the video, but you need to have an adhesive strip to stick it to the side of the metal right here. You can't let it free float in there because these things generate an enormous amount of heat. And I had some of this left over, which is, I think, one or two millimeter tape. And I had to use two pieces side by side on here. But if you're in a bind and you can't find it, what you can use is just regular double-sided tape just cut down to a strip like that. Or you might be able to uh, make a mixture of like thermal compound and super glue and stick it on the back of there and get it stuck to there. But don't just let it free float in there. It'll burn out really quick. I mean, I've left this thing sitting in open air for about 10 seconds and it was too hot to touch. So that's how hot they get. So basically, you do the same steps as before. You put the plastic retainer on, and you put the screen back on, and then I use this, which is just ultra duster, and make sure you blow off any contamination that you got on the screen. If you touch the screen on accident, or if you got some chemical or something, you can try using some isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip or a cotton pad, something that's clean to get it off of there. And just hope you didn't do too much damage to it. Well, I will be back once I got this panel assembled again, and then we'll test it and see what it looks like. All right, now we have the finished product. As you can see, no more pink monitor. It looks just as white as my TV back there. You can go in here and mess with the settings color settings and you can change it to whatever you want and it'll look nice so all of them no more pink and we're messing around with custom colors there you have it that is how to repair a dell 23 inch lcd monitor